Crocodiles are easy. They try to kill and eat you. People are harder. Sometimes they pretend to be your friend first. Steve Irwin The Order of Crocodilians contains some of the most badass creatures on the planet. Crocodiles, alligators, caimans, and gharials. They make up the largest reptiles on the planet. And if you sort out life forms by clade, their closest living relatives are actually birds. That's right, this beast is more closely related to a chicken than a Komodo dragon. They are, by and large, the largest and most fearsome cold-blooded creatures on the planet, reigning over the marshes, wetlands, mangrove forests, and other semi-aquatic environments of the tropics and subtropics. Due to their lack of ability to regulate their own body temperature, they are rarely found in colder areas, namely, rarely found in the temperate world. In semi-aquatic regions with warm weather, however, they are the apex predators with colossally powerful bite forces and a robust body size and shape that is built to tear flesh off of bones. But despite their monstrous appearance, they have a gentle side. They are one of the few types of animals outside of mammals and birds which take care of their young. The power of these crocodilians has inspired fear and respect across many human cultures around the world. The ancient Egyptians were one of the first complex civilizations to speak of the crocodile's power and ferocity through their distant observation of the Nile crocodile. Nile crocodiles swim and bask along the Nile River, obviously, alongside many swamps, marshes, and other wetlands across much of Africa. And in sharp contrast to many other megafauna, they are common and thriving. They are also one of the most deadly as far as humans are concerned, due to their ambush attacks alongside rivers, streams, and wetlands where humans are likely to farm and fish, especially on the African continent, where there is a substantial portion of the population that reside in rural subsistence farming areas. They also arguably have the highest bite force on Earth, with 5,000 pounds per pressure, this is combined with a death roll, in which the croc will spin in the water, drowning the prey and ripping it apart. Probably not the most pleasant way to die. But they're not a monolith. Crocodiles tend to have more narrow snouts than alligators. If you are living in the southeastern United States, you almost certainly are dealing with alligators. There are American crocodiles, but they're not as common and live along the brackish borders of coastal Florida, the Caribbean, and Central America. If you are living outside the southern United States and you see a large crocodilian, chances are it is most likely a crocodile, not an alligator. The only other alligator is the Chinese alligator, which is critically endangered. Early Chinese civilization was birthed on the Yangtze River, where they found a number of these crocodiles, and early farmers probably treated these alligators with both fear and respect. Granted, since they're half the size of an American alligator, and since they primarily live on a diet of small animals, they probably were not seen as much of a threat as many of their common counterparts. Alongside snakes, they also probably played a key role in the formation of China's dragon mythology. Fitting since dragons were seen in China as benevolent and powerful water beings. Moving back to Egypt, the people of this region saw the raw animalistic power of the crocodile and the carnal desires that fueled it, and decided to worship the god Sobek, who had the head of a crocodile and the body of a human. It was oftentimes associated with primal urges such as appetite and fertility. Egyptian soldiers also worshipped Sobek, seeing the raw power of crocodiles, and as strange as it sounds, he was also said to protect Egyptians from the dangers of the Nile, which made their civilization possible. They chose arguably the most dangerous beast to be their imaginary protector god. Sobek eventually became the patron saint of Fayum, a region of Egypt that previously had a city known as Crocodiliopolis, under its Greek translation. In Rome, they would later import crocodiles from this region to live in private zoos of the elite, as well as for shows in the Colosseum. Another ancient civilization that revered these crocodilians was the Indus River Valley civilization in what is now Pakistan in the Indian subcontinent. A family member of the crocodilians, the gharial, is rather unusual. It has a very narrow snout specializing for eating fish. Due to their pescatarian diets, they did not pose any significant threat to humans as did the Nile crocodile. Attacks do happen, but they're usually not fatal and not particularly common either. 
As Indo-Europeans arrived alongside the emergence of Hinduism, these narrow-jawed beasts would become viewed as spirits or creatures of the river ghost of Ganja. And by Ganja, I'm not referring to the weed, but rather the Hindu goddess of the Ganges River, a river that alongside the Indus would play a similar role to the Nile in Egypt. These gharials were seen as more benevolent, since they don't eat humans, and by and large were respected by various Indian cultures. However, today the Ganges River is literally full of shit and garbage, which has led to these remarkable animals to be critically endangered to this day. Now, let's move on. Crocodiles, alligators, and others played an important role in the customs of religions of various other people groups in the tropics, but unfortunately, much of the information that was handed down by oral tradition, rather than by writing, makes it difficult to ascertain what people thought. In many ways, these creatures, being the apex predators, elicited fear and respect wherever they were. This includes the caiman among many Amazonian people groups in the rainforest, or the alligator among many Native American populations in what is now the southern United States. Modern people have used these creatures as cultural icons as well. You may have heard of King K. Rool from the Donkey Kong video games or Ben Alligator from Tanya, among others. The French luxury clothing sports brand Lacoste uses a crocodile as its mascot. If you buy one of these shirts for $250, you are paying $50 for the shirt and $200 for the tiny crocodile logo. The role of crocodilians in human culture has been functional as well. Alligators and crocodiles have been the subject to niche farming efforts in the tropics and subtropics, as they produce meat and very high quality leather. Their meat is said to taste like chicken, but slightly tougher, which makes sense since the gators and crocodiles are closely related to birds, closer than they are to lizards. During the 1900s, alligator farms popped up in Florida and Louisiana. The meat is more expensive due to economies of scale which are smaller, as well as the fact that crocodiles need to eat meat which is more expensive than the feed you're using for chickens. This is why we usually don't eat too many carnivores. The higher up in the food chain, the more expensive it is and the less energy efficient you get. Nonetheless, they're not too difficult to take care of for an animal of their size. So long as you're in a hot, humid environment, they breed pretty easily. Alligator farming was somewhat common in the southeastern United States and provided a sort of backup plan due to much of the habitat destruction that was going on during the first half of the 20th century. To this day, their meat is usually used in Cajun cooking in southern Louisiana. Chinese alligators are also farmed for their meat along with their leather and dubious Chinese medicine. Crocodiles are also farmed in Southeast Asia, Africa, and Australia. There are obviously some issues with farming due to the quality of life in captivity and biohazards such as the spread of diseases. Given the fact that you have a lot of animals in the same spot, many of these pathogens can spread fairly easily, and crocodiles, like birds, can contain salmonella. The other major product crocodiles are known for, or infamous for, is leather. While making up less than 2% of leather production, it is still highly coveted due to its durability, and is seen as a projection of wealth and status for upper-class women. More controversially than meat production, are alligator and crocodile shows, most common in Southeast Asia, and among some redneck areas of the US. Crocodiles and crocodilians generally have found themselves in the pet trade as well, which is a terrible idea for the vast majority of people given their size, strength, and care requirements. Unless you live in a warm area with a tightly enclosed and massive backyard with a pond, do not get one as a pet even if you really want to. And if you really, really, really want to, I guess maybe get a pygmy dwarf came in, they're the most relatively, and I mean relatively, reasonable pet crocodilians. But honestly, you're just far better off getting a pet crested gecko instead. They're far easier to take care of, and they won't chew your arm off. To this day, the entire ordeal regarding farming crocodilians has to do with a balance between animal welfare, animal conservation, and supporting the livelihoods of peoples in these various industries. Speaking of conservation, crocodilians have had successes and failures. The biggest success story has been the American alligator, which was put on the endangered species list in 1973 due to the Endangered Species Act of the same year. 
and since then it's rebounded to becoming a very common species due to the protection of their habitats and regulations on poaching. Farming has also made hunting for them rather obsolete. However, other species have done terribly. Most infamously is the gharial of the Indian subcontinent. India has some of the most contaminated and polluted freshwater systems on the planet, toxicity that is amplified up the food chain, which in turn primarily hurts apex predators. This is why there are only a few thousand left. Moving eastward to China, Chinese alligator populations are oftentimes fragmented, making it difficult to get any sort of genetic diversity. As strange as it sounds, perhaps we may need to farm them as well, this will certainly elicit complaints regarding animal exploitation by vegans interested in the autonomy of individual animals, but may get support from some conservationists interested in the preservation of vulnerable species. And that's a big controversy in and of itself that deserves its own video. Putting that aside, the one thing we can all agree on is that these are truly epic beasts that have inspired people for generations and will continue to inspire generations for decades, if not centuries to come, as long as we make sure that they're still alive.